Today, let's talk about a time where in the most famous sermon Jesus ever preached, he pressed his listeners to make a decision between two claims. You'll see what I mean when I read to you from Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23. This is towards the conclusion of Jesus' great Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 7, starting at verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And when I will declare, then I will declare it to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. As Jesus continued the conclusion of the Sermon on the Mount, almost to the very end here in these verses, he called each of his listeners to another decision. And this is what he said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Jesus spoke here of saying the right thing, where these ones called Jesus Lord, that's the right and good thing to say. It's absolutely important to say that, but it's never enough by itself. We must use the language of Lord, Lord, that's true. Jesus doesn't rescue us if we do not use that language. Though hypocrites may say it, we should not be ashamed to say it. Yet to only say it is not enough. This warning of Jesus applies to people who speak or say things to Jesus or about Jesus, but don't really mean it. It isn't that they believe Jesus is a devil. They simply say the words very superficially. Their mind is elsewhere. But they believe there's value in the bare words and in fulfilling some kind of religious duty with no heart, no soul, no spirit, only bare words and passing thoughts. This warning of Jesus applies to people who say, Lord, Lord, yet their spiritual life has nothing to do with their daily life. They may go to church, perhaps they fulfill some religious duties, yet they sin against God and man just as any other person might. We could say that Jesus brought it all back to himself. Notice he says, whoever says to me, and then he says, they will say to me in that last day. It's a staggering idea that Jesus freely claimed that he is the one people must stand before on the final day of judgment, and he is the one who is rightly called Lord. This somewhat obscure teacher in what at that time was a backwater part of the world claimed to be the judge of all men in that day, the coming day of judgment. Jesus anticipated that some would protest on that day, saying, Lord, Lord, have we not? And so on. The people Jesus spoke of here had impressive spiritual accomplishments. They prophesied, they cast out demons, and they'd done many wonders. Those are wonderful things. But they meant nothing without true fellowship, without a true connection with Jesus. Significantly, they even did these things in the name of Jesus, but they never really had a relationship of trust, love, and fellowship with Jesus. Jesus did not seem to doubt their claims of doing the miraculous. He didn't say, you didn't really prophesy or cast out demons or do miracles. No, this leads us to understand that sometimes miracles are granted through pretended believers, reminding us that in the final analysis, miracles prove nothing. Sad to think that there will be some on that day who hear those words, I never knew you, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. In the end, there is one basis of salvation. It isn't mere words, even the right words. It's not spiritual works, even miraculous ones. But it is knowing Jesus and being known by him. It is our connection to him by the gift of faith that he gives us that secures our rescue. Connected to Jesus, we are secure. And without connection to him, all the miracles and great works in the world prove nothing. In this, Jesus gave us a choice. 
Each must make the claim, Lord, Lord, but will it be an empty claim or will it be filled with meaning? Your destiny depends on the answer.